Hi there guys, I'm Nikhil from Greedy Tech and in this video, I'll be showing you all the important tips and tricks for your OnePlus 8T. By the way, I've already posted the dedicated video for the best features of OnePlus 8T where I'll be talking about all the features offered by this phone. So definitely check out that video as well, link will be in the description. Now with that said, first I want to start off with the new navigation gestures. And once you enable them, you can swipe from the bottom of the screen to go home. We can swipe and hold from the bottom of the screen for recent apps and to go back a step, you can swipe from the left side or right side of the screen. For Google Assistant, you can swipe from the bottom left corner or bottom right corner diagonally and it triggers Google Assistant. Finally, we can also quickly switch between applications just by swiping left or right at the bottom part of the display. Next, I'm going to show you how to trigger Google Assistant with the power button. Once you enable this feature, to get the regular power options, you need to press volume up and power button both at the same time for the power options. Next, we also got the dark theme on this phone and you can enable it from the toggle or directly from the display settings. And once you enable it, it changes the complete theme of the phone. Stock applications like the phone dialer, SMS application also change automatically to the dark mode. And even some of the Google applications like Play Store, YouTube also enable dark mode automatically. Next, we have a new customizations page in settings from where you can change your wallpapers, clock style and ambient display mode. You can also change the fingerprint animations, horizon light, and all the things that are related to the UI elements of this phone. If you want to really customize your phone, this is something you should definitely check out. Next, this phone also has the live caption feature. And once you enable it, whenever you're watching video, you can see live captions on your phone. And this gets translated right on your phone. You can enable or disable the live captions directly using the volume panel. Next, I'm gonna show you how you can hide the front camera notch. Once you enable this feature, it puts a black bar beside the punch hole design making it look completely black and plain. Personally, I wouldn't recommend you to do this. Next, I'm going to show you how to change the refresh rate of your display. This phone has a 120Hz refresh rate display and by default it is set to the maximum refresh rate. But for some reason, if you want to go back to a regular 60Hz refresh rate, you can do that from here. Normally, I wouldn't recommend you to go back to 60Hz as it definitely affects the overall user experience. But if you want slightly better battery life, you can do that. Next, we have reading mode. You can access it from the display settings and once you enable this feature, it just makes the display black and white. Once again, if you're someone who reads a lot on your phone, you can use this feature. You can also configure this feature to automatically turn on reading mode for some specific applications. And it's definitely a pretty cool feature. Now going on next, in the camera settings, I'd recommend you to disable shutter sound if you don't like the shutter sound every time you take a picture and you can also disable watermark or add a custom watermark from the same camera settings. Usually I disable shutter sound and watermark as well. Next I'm going to show you how to use split screen mode on this phone. For that first we need to go to the recent apps page and then click and hold on the application that you want to open split screen mode on. Just press and hold and then select split screen. Once you do that, that application will open up in the top window and you can select the secondary application from your recent apps or just go to the home screen and select the secondary application. Now we can use two applications at the same time. Now with that said, even now there are some applications that do not support this feature. So to fix that, first we need to enable developer options. For that we need to go to settings, about and click on build number seven times. Once you do that, developer options will be enabled. Now go to developer options, scroll all the way to the bottom and enable force activities to be resizable. Just enable it and then restart your phone. Once you do that, we will be able to use all applications in split screen mode. Next, I'm going to show you how to take screenshots on this phone. Default way or the simplest way is to use the buttons. Just press the volume down and power button both at the same time to take a screenshot. For some reason, if you're not able to do that, we also have the three finger screenshot gesture. By default, it is enabled. If it's not, you can enable it from settings. Once it is enabled, you can just swipe down using three fingers to take a screenshot. This gesture works really well and nowadays most of the phones offer this feature. Next, I'm going to show you how to take a long screenshot. For that, first we need to take a regular screenshot. We can either use the buttons or the gesture. And once you take a screenshot, you get a preview at the bottom. Click expanded screenshot. Once you do that, your phone will scroll the page automatically to take a long screenshot. Once you're done, just click the screen to stop scrolling. Then you'll get a longer screenshot. Next, we have some pretty cool gestures on this phone that I would definitely recommend you to use. First, we have double tap to wake and just like the name suggests, once you enable this feature, you can just double tap the screen to wake it up. If you're using face unlock feature, 
then you can just double tap it, it wakes up, sees your face and then immediately unlocks the phone. Next we also have the O gesture where we can draw an O to open the camera application. My favorite one is the V where we can draw V on a lock screen to toggle the flash. Besides these pre-configured characters, we can also add custom characters like S, M, W for custom actions. Next, to display the battery percentage and the network usage on the status bar, you need to go to settings and enable these two toggles. Once you do that, you can see the battery percentage and the network usage on the status bar. If you can't trace the steps, directly search for battery percentage in settings. Next, I'm going to show you some handy home screen gestures. Now by default, when you're on the home screen, you can do a swipe down gesture to pull down the notification bar. You can do a swipe up gesture to open the app drawer. Besides that, we can also do a double tap to sleep. This feature is disabled by default and you can enable it from the home screen settings. Once you enable double tap to sleep, just double tap in an empty area on the home screen to put your phone to sleep. Next, we got a new feature called parking location as part of OnePlus shelf, which will allow you to save the location of your parked vehicle. You can take a temporary picture as landmark, which will automatically get deleted later or else use the GPS location as well. Going on next, if you're someone who likes to do a lot of screen recordings, maybe it's for games or for personal use, now on this phone, we can do screen recording at 4K resolution as well. From screen recording settings, we can further change the video bitrate, frame rate, audio source and video orientation and so on. Next, I'm going to show you how to change the default apps on this phone. Once again, you can either follow my steps or just directly search for default apps in settings. From here, you can change your default phone dialer, default SMS application, default browser, and so on. Next, we have a new feature on this phone called Optimized Charging. And once you enable this feature, your phone will read your charging patterns and according to that, it will optimize your charging patterns. Normally, you won't have to think about it. You get a 65 watt power adapter and it can instantly charge your phone. It's great in short term, but if you want extended battery life, then I would recommend you to turn on this feature. Next, we have a new feature called Logbox in the default file manager, which will allow you to hide files. It's an inbuilt feature, so it works pretty well. Next, we have another new feature called File Dash in the same default file manager application. It works pretty similar to Share It or AirDrop, which will allow you to send and receive files only between the OnePlus phones. So guys, these are all the most important tips and tricks that you should definitely know about your phone. If I missed out on anything important, do let me know by commenting below this video. If you are planning to buy this phone, use the link in the description. It always helps the channel. I'm Nikhil from Greedy Tech signing off. Have a nice day.